Due to the global pandemic, we have largely appreciated the effort of doctors, while on the other side, mathematicians and data analysts are doing their best to decrease critical outcomes. Although numbers can't make vaccines, they can make predictions, and that definitely can save lives. The first step in the chain is modeling epidemics, which consists of three constant components, data, calculations and forecasts. In case of pandemic, an enormous amount of existing data is gathered from all over the world. Next, this information undergoes certain mathematical calculations, providing us with the most plausible forecast. Then, assuming that the forecast is a new argument, the same process circulates, making further predictions. In 1927, back when all these calculations were done by hand, an origin of the most general SIR model was published by William Kermack and Anderson McKendrick. SIR stands for Susceptible, Infected and Removed, and the whole population is assigned to three compartments. In this model, we assume that the complete immunity is conferred by a single attack and the population remains constant. Now, let's write the rate of change of the compartments with respect to time. DSDT is negative because the number of susceptibles only decreases. It's proportional to the infected and susceptibles fraction of the population. The more they are infected, easier the virus spreads. The less they are susceptibles, it's harder for the infected to find them. Next, we multiply it by beta, which is a fixed average amount of contacts per infected per day, multiplied by the probability of disease transmission. Therefore, the ADT equals positive DSDT subtracting the number of people who recovered or died. That means that the RDT equals alpha t. Here, the most important part is played by the basic reproduction number, R0. R0 is simply the average number of new infections generated by each infected person. This number is highly related to how efficiently the virus will spread. As we have our calculations, let's test them in Excel with some hypothetical numbers. To get the J-Pilson value, we need to know the J-value first. Let's start from day 0. Say that the fraction of susceptibles is 0 0.99 and of infected 0 0.001. Set the differential of time to 1 day, assign 0.8 value to beta and 0.1 to alpha. Then, apply all the before-mentioned calculations to these variables, and voila! Then, we predict. And here's what we get. This simple model is definitely far from perfect. But mathematicians working on implementing every possible detail and characteristic of the virus into the model. Next comes reflecting on the forecast. The best solution would have been an ideal quarantine, but it's nearly impossible to sustain it. Simulations enable us to alter the outbreak parameters, helping us to come up with the best strategies. It's like observing the epidemic from the mountain. Running simulations contributes to developing the best strategies and interventions to prevent and control the outbreak, so that the healthcare system has the ability to take care of all the cases. Some heroes hide behind masks, and some behind numbers. <laughs>